Hello, Cosplay World! This is part three in a four-part series in which I make a Snover Gajinka. It's a Gajinka that's made by Cowslip, the artist, or designed by it. And then um, I'm going to be kind of bringing it to life as best I can. Now, with the OB, I'm going to be doing some kind of cheaty methods. I'm going to be making it sort of as if it were a um, corset. So it's going to be a little bit different. There's several layers and attachments and details, which, um, if I were to have to put on every single time, would take me uh, maybe half an hour just on the OB section, and I uh, don't really have the patience for that. <laughs> oh, um, so what you see here is a spray-on dye for cotton fabrics, or fabrics in general. I don't think it specifies cotton, but cotton is usually the easiest to dye. I try a few other things, but lace is kind of a finicky material it comes it frays very easily so when I dip dyed it it turned into like a raisin that frayed very easily so I wanted a light dye <laughs> that wouldn't do that um, and that spray dye came uh, in a set of three of tan brown and green uh, for a camo theme but it helped out quite a lot because I have brown tan highlights that I need to add on later so yay it was super useful ah so, to make this more of a corset, um, what I'm going to be doing with the various layers is backing them in this hat stabilizer. This is an iron-on feasible interfacing. It's very, very thick. It's going to make it so that it looks clean. I don't need to constantly being, I don't need to constantly iron it, um, uh, and it will hold its shape. Um, it also helps correct my posture because there's a ton of hat stabilizer in there, and that tends to not bend so easily. So, yay! Um, so once I have it actually ironed in place, I'm going to stitch down the edges and I'm going to try and hide as many of those stitches as possible because they're not part of the, th the like design work. So um, kind of have to take a few steps in order to get it to do what I want here. Um, a particularly difficult or I guess time consuming thing that I had to do was the trim along the top of the obi. So, not only do we have the lace, but we also have this kind of wavy um, bias tape trim effect. Uh, and cutting and sewing a wa wavy bias trim effect is a pain in the butt. <laughs> Generally, just because when you're folding over material trying to make um, a wavy seam, uh, it's, it's hard. Um, and when you're trying to fold that material then over the edge of your OB, then you start running out of material and you start getting very thick very uh, the layers of material start adding up and your sewing machine goes ah no not anymore I can't do it uh, so you have to be careful about it what I ended up doing was um, sewing the top edge of all the layers together there's also a black trim in there too um, and then folding that over the top of the obi um, removing a layer one of the top layers kind of like I peeled away um, uh, top of a bar. I folded away at one of the layers uh, making it less less fabric basically and then sewed that to the obi and then it was that seam was hidden when I re flipped over the top of the uh, material yay all these layers and as you can see I'm stitching it to the inside to the back of the OB where it's less visible we just fold it over basically yeah. oh now the bottom the, oh, sorry the base OB there's actually there's two layers and then there's the trim that's gonna go on top or sorry the the like rope detail is gonna go on top uh, that one's not too bad as far as the edge is concerned because it's a very straight line I can hide that fairly easily um, but <clears throat> the yeah, here I'm just gonna clean it up and cover it with some material uh, but the other one we're going to have to do a bit more work because it has one of those uh, triangular tips just like the skirt and that is a pain in the butt and here you see me um, as I've already sewn it I'm going to iron it into place over the um, over the edge here and then we're going to add the um, add the lace trim to hide that fact yeah we have to have to pin it down because it doesn't really want to fold over that material now lace is um, a little bit difficult to sew because it's not like a regular knitted material you're gonna need to do some spacing there uh, I went with a very long stitch here and that's also the reason why I stitched down the white first 
because I wanted the white in place as strongly as possible. Um, but I went with a very long stitch. It's just there to make sure that the lace doesn't move. It'll be fine. It's a decorative added piece. It's not under any structural stress. It'll be okay. All right. So for the layer that goes over the top, we're going to do a similar process. Uh, here you see me stitching the triangular, tr triangular tips like I did with the skirt. I will um, <clears throat> stitch the... Uh, I will sew along the line, and once I get to a point or a valley, I will uh, put the needle down through the fabric and pivot the material in on the needle to make sure that my stitches don't move or I don't have a big jump anywhere and then I will continue on in a new direction. And I'll do this the entirety of the way. Um, so I'm going to clean up the edges here and then with another piece of fabric I'm going to cover that up from the back uh, and hide it in that way. Um, so I do, I do the, I guess, inside, I do the lining first and then I fold it over the uh, fabric over the front and then we have a edge on the inside of the obi and that's not as easily seen. Uh, this is definitely where the fray check is going to be super useful because uh, the bottom spikes uh, make a lot of contact with my waist and they tend to bend a lot so I definitely fray check the crap out of these uh, so they did not go anywhere. Um, and that they stay nice and clean. They do need a little bit of maintenance after each use or after like well before each use to make sure that they look nice and clean but as you can see I'm using uh, tons of fabric tack there as well <laughs> to make sure that the edges and corners don't go anywhere. Yep. Um, and as you can see that's just how that goes together. Yay! Um, sort of gluing it into place here. This is going to be uh, yeah, a little messy until we clean it up with <laughs> with scissors and make sure that none of that is visible. Ugh. Oh, um, it's not the best. I don't know if I wanted to sew through like l multiple layers of fabric and multiple layers of uh, the uh, hat stabilizer to get that to work. And here we are. We're putting the rivets into place. These are going to be how the uh, OB functions as a corset. It is not going to come together and butt up. It is actually going to layer over each other. So I've measured my waist and I will layer over the OB like you would expect the OB to layer over itself. Um, and then uh, kind of place the rivets where they will meet and be nice and taut on my body with, a, with the extra material underneath to allow for me to open and close it if I gain weight or if I don't feel like wearing it especially tightly. And we're going to do exactly the same thing on the uh, um, the base layer. I make sure to do the base layer first because um, you could be not completely right about where you want the placement to be and then um, it doesn't fit quite right and you end up seeing um, the layers underneath because the spacing isn't there. So. We have this wonderful fabric, uh, sorry, uh, braided rope. And when I bought these, they were only, I don't know, two and a half feet long. So I decided to hide the fact that they're two underneath the fabric, or sorry, underneath the flowers. Uh, yep, that's basically the reason why I stitched it down in place is because I'm hiding the fact that they're two pieces and I didn't want it to shift and for me to be constantly having to mess with it to make sure you couldn't tell that it, well, that's what was going on. Um, it also generally makes it a little easier to put on because I, that's one element that I don't need to fasten and position in place when I do put the cosplay on. Uh, it is a little rough on the flowers, but we can always fluff those out. They're artificial flowers. We just need to make sure that they're fine when we take them out of the box and use them for uh, when we're getting ready to put the costume on. So it's uh, there's some strap... Um, straps in the back to adjust for size and that's basically how the OB works or the corset OB abomination I have made here. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy. Next time we're going to be going into the painting and the finishing. There's various details to be added on to the piece. That's going to be the last of our videos. Hope you check that out at FinalCosmware.com. See you guys next time. Good times to all. Hurrah! If you like this, you should check out FinalCosmware.com. There's lots of pretty cool stuff over there. See you guys next time. Good times to all. Rah!